friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, it's been over a year since I last talked about emergency and off-grid lighting solutions, as well as how we light our home on a regular basis. So I wanna go over a few things, and as you can see, I have a bunch of stuff lit right here. <laughs> and this is just a fraction of what we have. I wasn't gonna bring everything in, and I actually can't bring everything in. And the first thing I wanna talk about is your actual emergency lights, things that you might wanna consider having on hand in case of, you know, if you're still on public power, in case of a power outage. I've never actually used these particular things as a backup light source, but I use them for other things. This one we haven't used at all. It's brand new, our son bought it for us. It was part of a whole kit. But anyway, uh, this one I've shown before in other videos, and this is an expensive light. This was also a gift from our oldest son because you know he knows how we are about things like this. While this one is expensive, it, the thing that's very cool about it is there's a couple different ways you can charge it and one is through a, this USB cord right here so through your computer or other USB port or it's also got a crank charger on it which is also quite handy and then it's got this little handle here where you can hang it up you've got the feet that you can either use as is or you can fold them up like this and it has various settings you probably can't tell this is, if I turn it down enough, you might be able to tell that it's only lighting this half over here. We've got varying degrees of light with that. So that's really handy. And it also has the emergency red flashing light at the top. So this is a real good one to have for camping or to keep in your car. Now the thing I like about this light and the way I've used it the most is usually our house we don't keep it brightly lit. The only time I turn on all the lights in this particular room like this is when I'm shooting videos. That's the only time so that we can have a better better lighting for the videos itself. However, we have other ways that we light our home that requires either very little to no electricity throughout the year, but as a result, our lighting is very low, and sometimes I need a little bit more direct lighting on the projects I'm working on so I can really see what I'm doing. And so having this light beside me, I tend to use this one quite a bit. So it's, uh, it's just very handy. And in that case, I only light you do it so it's lighting just this front part instead of the whole back because that's all I need is it to be more direct. But this is also, lights like this are great to have on hand for emergency light source and the battery life lasts a very long time and especially in something like this where you have a couple different ways you could charge it if you have a usb charger for your car or in your car you can use it you can charge it in there you can charge it through your laptop or even again through the crank now this one this one is a brand new one that like i said we just got from our son this year as part of a set they had a knife and a bunch of other stuff and the thing that was kind of cool about this is i i don't know that it has other ways to charge it because i haven't looked into it but to turn it on you simply pull it up like that by the part that you can use to hang it with. So that's, I thought that was kind of neat. And it's a pretty bright light. Another one I think would be good to also keep in a rig or use for camping. Uh, another one that we have that I don't have in here is we have a lot of gas lanterns, a lot of them. And all of them we've collected at garage sales, all of them. And we have quite a few. So in situations where we're, out of power and we're we don't have a whole lot of solar power because it's the middle of winter if we're if we need a bright brighter light than what we've got here that i'm showing you right here then we'll bring in our gas lanterns usually just one is sufficient and the gas lanterns are nice because they put out so much light they're very bright those are the type of people tend to take a lot you know camping or at least they used to but I think that's probably why we've been able to find a lot of them for really cheap at garage sales because a lot of people are switching to the safer and uh, long-lasting LED lights, which is understandable. You don't need any fuel, but you do need a way to charge them. Now let me go over some of the lighting that we use when we have power outages because that's going to vary a lot depending on whether or not we have a lot. If it's Most of our power outages are in the wintertime when we have low solar collection. 
So we try to refrain from using the LED lights plugged into our solar power so that we can really conserve our solar power for running the more important things like our freezer and our refrigerator. But we do also have a backup to that if needed and that is our gas generator. But we try to again because that's going to cost more money and all that and it's a little bit noisier though we have a very quiet gas generator. Uh, it is, it's, it's nice to have that backup but it's also nice to be able to conserve that if we can. So these are the forms that we use when um, we don't want to depend on our solar power and we have a public power outage. So that would be our oil lanterns like this. All of the ones that we have like this are the kind that we hang up. And so I have plant hangers that I hang these by. I bought a whole pack of them for a good deal. This one I found at a garage sale for a dollar. This is actually vintage from the 19, I think 1940s, maybe a little earlier than that. Uh, they came in several different colors. They came in the red, green, and yellow, and they were train used for trains. And so the lens would have been the same color as the lamp. And so, so that's the color that they would see. And what we did was we just took the red off of there so I could actually use a, a light. And this is the perfect size for hanging in my kitchen where these ones are a little bit too big for the place that I wanted this light. And so here is a picture of how this looks of where it's hanging in our kitchen, hanging from the plant hook. And then all of, again, I have five of these Furehound and I bought all of ours brand new. I have two green, two blacks, and a red, because it depends on which room. Now the room I'm standing in now, I have two of these in the black, and here's a couple pictures here. So you can see one of my sewing corners. Picture is actually a little bit old. Some things have changed since that, but the lighting's still the same, the type of lighting. So you can see the LED lights there, the string lights. We have those year round. <laughs> we, they're not Christmas lights to us, they're just, home lights to us and then you can see the black Furehand uh, lantern hanging above there. The two green ones that we have are in are in our living room also hanging from plant hooks and these ones probably get used more frequently than any of our other hanging lanterns. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a link though you can get these on Amazon and I could give you our affiliate link. What I'm going to do is give you the link that I originally bought the lamps from because if you go to the Vermont Lighting Company, I think it's called, whatever, either way, I'll make sure that link is in the description box, and you look for, they have a special section just for the ones that have like a dented tank, and I bought the, the two black and the red ones I got through that, and I was able to get $10 off of each lantern by doing it that way, and honestly, you cannot see the dents. You cannot see them. I had to really look close to find the dents, and in most cases, they were at the back side where it's not gonna show anyway, and where are, because these lanterns are all hung up higher, you, you can't see them at all. They're totally invisible, these dents but they give you $10 off. So if you're interested in the Furehand, I love these lanterns, and uh, you wanna save a little bit of money on those, go that route, that's gonna be your best bet. Some other lights that I tend to use quite a bit, a lot, in fact, ones like this, I have two like this I keep in our main bathroom, and I use both of them quite, quite like every day. So when I'm showering early in the morning before the sun's up, I hate turning on the overhead light. I like to have my little, uh, oil lamps burning in there. I just light one at a time, but I always have two in case I forget to keep one filled up when one, one gets empty, then I'll go fill that up. I'll have the other one as a backup. Those ones, as far as my small ones, get used the most. One of the second most used ones is this one. When the power goes out, we use this in our dining room. And then another light that I have that I really, really like that my sister-in-law bought us, uh, bought me for my birthday a few years ago. This is LED. She bought it at her local store. It's a beautiful light. It actually makes a real lovely reflection, uh, the way the light goes through the cracked looking glass. And uh, so this we'll use in power outages and it's just, it's just a really pretty light. And it's not like we never use this stuff when we don't have power outages. Sometimes we do just try to go strictly with our, our more natural lights like the candles and the oil lamps. Another example here, this set, I, the candle inside and the lantern itself was a uh, were both bought at the same garage sale. I, bought, I purchased them separately, but it was a brand new candle. It was a, one of those party light candles that are kind of expensive. I paid a dollar for the candle. I paid a dollar for this. And uh, this is just a, this kind of lighting is actually really nice. I actually have a couple of these kind of lanterns around here. And 
they they just make a super a super nice light now this this one's actually pretty dim i have more of these that are brighter when my oldest son and Kayla got married uh, one of their wedding decors on the tables and all around were these little these little LED candles sitting in these little jars and she was just getting rid of them she was going to sell them on the marketplace and I said hey I'll buy them from you which I did pay her for I wasn't she was going to give them to me I said no I'm paying you for these you bought them and you need to get your money back and so I have a whole bunch of these a whole bunch because I bought all of them from her so that I could have both the little candles as well as the jars okay there there's one that's a little bit brighter so i have a bunch of these sitting around in our rec room here so when we're having get togethers and stuff in here which we have one coming up real soon and i'll just there for our winter one and i'm really excited but anyway I, I have these set all around in the room as another just another lighting source because again we don't use the overhead lights we use all like led lights lanterns and things like that and that just keeps it more you know i don't you know this was set up initially was built to be a business room and that's why all the fluorescent lights which i don't like when we're just hanging out in here i again only use them when we need added lights for shooting videos but when we're just hanging out in here no we go for the more either you know the more, a lot more subdued lighting so anyway yeah so i got a lot of these and uh, mostly they're the ones i'm using are just in this room because in our other rooms that's where all this other lighting is so then another thing i did I have are these little candles which I talked about a year ago when I first bought them and I did get a put a link to them I'm not sure if these particular ones will still be available but I'm still loving these they've still been working great for us and I will if I can find that particular link I'll put that one down below if not I'll at least put a search for candles like this if you're interested so these are LEDs as I'm sure you figured out but they look kind of like a real candle with the, the flickering light and you just turn them on or off by twisting the bottom now these particular ones there's some that you can pay a little bit more for that have the uh, that have a timer on it but these ones were all I needed I was able to get a better deal buying this as a set I think it was a set of six that I got all together yeah because I have two more um, I have the three here in that candle abra this one and then I have two more in a hanging candle abra that Smokey had made for us uh, over a year ago and I'll show you a picture of that right here and that is hanging in our living room now the thing about these little candles is they're not as you can see they're not very bright uh, but they they are just a really pretty light but they're not going to be the kind of light you're going to want to use for trying to light up a whole room these lights are nice for adding like our last power outage that we had this was perfect instead of lighting one of these and leaving it unattended in the bathroom i was able to turn this light on right here in our bathroom and just leave it on and not worry about it and it la it added just enough light for us to be able to see to go in there and use the restroom and wash our hands and it, it was perfect so that way we could leave it unattended and not worry about forgetting about it in the bathroom and because i do have a viewer who says that she found these little though i've never personally had an issue with these smaller lanterns i i have quite a few of them and i use them frequently um, she said that these ones tend to be a little more dangerous if left in, unattended which was a good point for her to bring up but again for me these have worked perfectly for using I, I have two in our main bathroom but I also keep one in our other bathroom and then this one on the dining room table but none of these lights when they're burning they never get left unattended but that should apply to anything that you're going to have an op open flame whether it be a candle a gas lantern an oil lantern like this uh, you really should look at lighting you know in rooms where you need to have a light on at all time something like this even would be plenty bright to keep in a, a smaller room in a bathroom just to be able to get your way through there to see your way through or you don't have to carry a candle back and forth to each room i also wanted to talk about some other lighting which i didn't bring in here to show you because these lights are used in places where we have them attached and i don't want to unattach them from where they are and so they serve various purposes and one of these lights is a little bar light that i keep right above my wood stove so that i can put more direct light straight down on what i'm doing when i'm cooking things on the wood stove 
still because in our um, and I'm going to get to this in a little bit and show you some more pictures of the lighting that we use regularly but it's not quite enough to light up the top of the wood stove when I really need to see what I'm doing another one that I have that I really recommend getting especially for emergency backup light are the little switch lights you have a couple of ways that you can attach them you can either you know it has openings in the back where you can put a screw or a nail or something on the wall and attach it that way it also has a, a stick on thing so I have a light here by the main door that comes into this room so if the power's out I can just switch that on but because of it's a it's a pocket door I can, we can't put screws in that wall right in that very area so the actual electric light switch to that is way farther over you have to really reach around my grain mill to get to it but that little switch light I actually use it quite a bit when I just I don't want to try to fumble my way around the grain mill to find the other light switch I just turn the emergency light on and it's enough to light up this big 1100 square foot room and to be able to see what I'm doing so it's perfect well I also keep one in our pantry in our pantry room and then I keep one in each of our bathrooms as you can see in these pictures here now initially we started off with just the little puck lights and I have those in various places like I have one in our bedroom so if I need to walk in there you know powers out I can't turn on the overhead light I don't have any other light I can just click it on and see what I'm doing in there but they also the puck lights also work really good in putting like under your in lower cabinets like I have one really big corner lower cabinet my lower cabinets Patrick built all those you, you guys don't you rarely get to see those you only get to see the ugly beat up ones that he has yet to build and replace <laughs> but anyway it's a this big section which most people would put a lazy Susan in but I didn't want that because too it's too easy for things to fall behind a lazy Susan and then it's almost impossible to get to where this way I can actually crawl back in there and get to stuff but it can be really hard to see because it can be pretty dark so I have a puck light in there and I just click that on when I need to see what I'm doing in there so the puck lights and the switch lights are are really I, I recommend both depending on the situations you're going to use them in if you want something with a brighter light the switch light is actually going to be the best it puts out a nice bright light and I will go ahead and link to those ones down below in the description box if you want to check them out. An excellent source of an emergency light. It is LED and battery operated, so it's going to last for a very long time. You know, when you're looking at battery operated lights or anything like that, you want you do want to go with the LED because they use a lot less batteries than an incandescent light. So that's why LEDs are best when it comes to that. And they can be very bright and now let me go ahead and get to the ways that we normally have our house lit throughout the whole year most of the year it's running off of our solar power and that is by simply taking some led string lights we'll grab them when they're on sale after christmas you can usually get them 50 percent off or more and we stock up on them but i have yet to replace any of the string lights and we've had them that we've had all throughout our house and uh, as you can see in these various pictures that I'm showing you here, they're the same lights that I initially hung up there. I've never had to replace them. They've been up there for, gosh, I don't know, some of them maybe as long as 10 years, but I've actually been using that kind of lighting uh, even before we, were, we got our solar power, our solar panels, and got that all set up. But yeah, so it just makes a lovely uh, lighting that uses very little electricity so even if you're on public power you're going to be saving a lot more electricity doing it that way uh, just keep in mind especially as you get older we tend to need a lot more light that um, it's very subdued and if you're trying to work on any projects it's not always going to be enough light for what you need most of the time it is for us for what we're doing but every so often like i said when i use this light right here uh, that usually is enough but most of the time i can do what i need to do with just the string lights and even being in our mid 50s most of the time that's an that's an all we need to just for our regular day-to-day -day stuff so just something to consider and then it's just really easy for us we have four solar power outlets that patrick and 
installed through our house and each one is next to an, a regular public power outlet. When you're looking at the fridge and the freezer and stuff like that, if our solar power is low and we can just switch it over to the public power, and, but if the public power goes out, we can switch it over to the solar power so we can go back and forth without it makes it really easy. So the same applies to our string lights where I've got it set up that I can switch them over one way or the other, depending on whether or not we have a lot of solar power or our solar power is really Really low and we're trying to conserve it even though the LED uses so very little I could probably easily run them year-round but a there are certain times of the year especially the darkest shortest days of the year that we try to conserve that solar power as much as possible because again that is also when we're most likely and do always have power outages sometimes we can have three or four in a single winter i think this year we've only had one and it lasted a full day anyway just a few ideas for you to think about for your uh whether you're going off grid here's some options or you are off grid here are some options for lighting that you may have not considered. If you have solar power or gas generator, the LED lights that you plug in are a very good option, but so are some of these lights here, depending on your lighting needs that you have or the look that you want. And then even if you're not going off grid, I do still recommend having these various types of lights on hand. And another one that people recommend quite a bit, that is buying like the outdoor solar lights so that they can sit outside during the day and collect the solar power and then at night when you need it you bring those lights in and coming back to the uh, oil lamp some people may wonder what we use in ours for fuel now kerosene is cheapest thing to buy and I do recommend having kerosene on hand because that can be used for heaters and various other things. But as far as using for fuel in our oil lamp, we got away from using the kerosene and we switched to the clean heat. So that's what we use in all of our oil lamps is the clean heat. It is more expensive. It still has somewhat of an odor, but not near as strong as kerosene. And it doesn't have, make us feel the way that kerosene does. Another good option is to get the pure paraffin oil. It's a, I have some of that too, but that one is the most expensive, but it is totally odorless and clean burning. So those are a couple of oils that you may want to consider. And by the way, I also have a video just on taking care of your oil lamps of various kinds. And I talk more about the fuel and stuff in there as well. I'll go ahead and link to that video down below too. So anyway, I hope you give, I hope you enjoyed this video and it gives you some ideas and also just kind of shows you, this is how we do our off grid lighting and, uh, and our also our emergency lighting uh, year round. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other ideas or some of your favorite things that you like to use for your backup light sources or your everyday light sources that are off grid, go ahead and put those in comments down below. All right, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.